Good evening. After two long years cut off from so many countries, Australia is just hours away from rejoining the rest of the world. The last of our international border restrictions are coming down, marking a major milestone on the path out of the pandemic. For so much of this pandemic, individuals have sacrificed their rights to honour the rights of the collective. Irene Iliadis' partner could not even travel from the UK to support her through cancer. We put in 10 exemptions for Brian to come out to Australia but keep, kept getting rejected. Tomorrow is a win for Irene and for all of us. She will be among many to reunite with someone she loves and misses. Just huge relief that the borders have finally opened after 23 months, which seems way too long. Brian's arrival in Sydney is among 26 incoming international flights. March 2020 is the last time Australia welcomed international visitors, no strings attached. The wait is over. The only strings now, full vaccination, which still means only two doses, or an exemption. I think it'd be fair to say this is a massive injection of hope into the tourism sector. Hope comes in the form of employment and money. International visitors inject $4 billion a month to Australia's economy. A colossal boost, not just for the tourism sector, but anywhere a tourist might spend. Retail, hospitality, agriculture, transport. Tomorrow's new dawn begins at dawn, a 6.20 arrival from Los Angeles, and throughout the day, flights from Japan, Canada, Singapore, Vanuatu, New Zealand, Fiji. The last to arrive is from Dubai at 10.30. We're seeing more carriers bringing more flights back. So Eddie Had are going to be daily back into Sydney again. We're seeing Emirates putting A380s back in. British Airways are due back in in March, April. We're going from COVID cautious to COVID confident when it comes to travel. Confidence is a message Australia is trying to sell the world right now, that we are back in business. Australia is a long haul destination. It takes a lot of time and money just to get here and tourists will want to know the rules will not change on them. Only last month, the world saw Novak Djokovic getting booted out, but a few weeks later... Don't go small, go Australia. A message that from tomorrow, Australia is a welcoming country for anyone who respects the rules. This is going to take years for us to recover, and the big message for governments, whether it's federal or state, is now is the time to put more money into your destination agencies. And Robert Ovardi was at the International Terminal this evening. Rob, not long to go now. Mark, here, yeah, not long at all. Six hours, in fact, and it cannot come soon enough. It is absolutely dead here. You can see behind me arrivals uh, A and B, totally dead. No passengers, nobody there to greet them. The rental car desk there, nobody employed or manning them, no customers there. This cafe has only just opened to welcome a flight from Fiji. Otherwise, in a word, it is depressing here. It has been depressing for a couple of years, and from tomorrow morning at dawn, that all changes. Everybody arriving here will be greeted by by drag queens. They'll be greeted by surf lifesavers and tote bags carrying Vegemite, toy kangaroos and also toy koalas. A reminder to the world after all the doom and gloom we've suffered over the past two years that Australia is in fact a fun destination for them to visit. A very welcome reminder Rob, thank you.